Hey freaks, it's JJ. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, I am an author and a metalhead who talks about the stories behind some of my favorite concept albums. So today we are back into the Aryan universe and we'll be talking about Aryan's 2004 album, The Human Equation. So if you have not watched my other videos in the Aryan universe, I suggest you do that now. I'll put a little link here and at the end of the video. Um, but yeah, if you don't watch, if you're not familiar with the rest of the storyline that all interconnects and everything, you might get a little, a little lost in this one. Um, so yeah, I especially suggest you at least uh, know about the story that goes behind Electric the Electric Castle, and the Universal Migrator Part 1 and 2. So, um, yeah, this story is basically, uh, it's about a man in a coma after a car accident, and in his coma, he's kind of visited by the personification of all his, like, repressed emotions, kind of like, you know, like the ghosts of Christmas past. And so, you know, the, these emotions kind of open his eyes to different aspects of himself and the memories uh, of his past over the course of 20 days while he's in this coma. And so, to wake up, he must kind of endure these emotions and sort of relive the the memories um, and learn from them as he goes along in order to wake up so uh, yeah, if you haven't uh, already, make sure you hit subscribe if you want to support what I do here on this channel. I also invite you to join my Metalhead community. Link is down in the description um, if you're interested in that. Um, anyway, let's get started. So we start with day one vigil. And so we have our protagonist. Um, our protagonist is just named me um, in this in this story here. Um, and me is voiced by James Labrie, of course, of Dream Theater. And so we have our character of me in the hospital in a coma and beside him is his wife and his best friend. And these two are trying to figure out what happened to him. Um, the wife implies that maybe, you know, she or the best friend possibly had something to do with his accident, um, but they really don't know what caused his accident. So that brings us to day two, isolation. And so me, uh, so our me character finds himself in this kind of strange limbo between like dead and alive, sort of like this purgatory um, that he exists in while he's in this coma. And he doesn't have any kind of like recollection of how he got there or what's happened. Um, he first meets a few of his emotions who have, you know, taken on these like humanoid forms and bodies inside this strange land. And so first he meets Fear, voiced by Michael Ackerfield of Opeth, of course, which is amazing. I love the cast that, that uh, uh, Aryan has come up with for this album. But um, of course we have Michael uh, who voices uh, Fear and who, you know, this fear character kind of tries to bring the me character down while we also meet um the the character of reason who helps lead him through the you know this labyrinthine land and kind of serves as you know his inner conscience throughout the this album we also meet passion as well as pride um, pride makes sure that our protagonist doesn't give up on this journey is always pushing pushing our protagonist to keep going um, and then we also have Love, who kind of just gently encourages our protagonist to um, keep going and to, you know, look within himself for strength. And so Me agrees to go with these strange beings and he begins this journey. Day three, pain. So Me meets um, another emotion named Agony, who kind of just berates our, our protagonist for being weak. Um, and, you know, of course, all these emotions are an aspect of Me himself. And so this is the part of himself that, you know, feels like he is weak and, and can't do anything good. And so uh, Agony tries to get me to give up and tells him, you know, that he's all alone and that he's not worthy of love. Um, but then we have Rage who steps in. Of course, Rage is voiced by Devin Townsend. And we see how Rage uh, takes over to kind of protect me. So this just kind of goes to show how Rage has become sort of like a defense mechanism to deal with pain. And so, you know, we have Rage like pushing um, Agony off to the side. So me makes this connection that, you know, his Rage has, has become kind of a defense mechanism for whenever he feels weak. And then we have the character of Love just kind of helping him get through this hard realization and helping him through this, this limbo land that he's in currently. We then move on to day four mystery. And so we flash back to the hospital where the wife and the best friend are still sitting beside our protagonist as he lays there, you know, unresponsive in his coma. Um, and they're trying to puzzle out, you know, what this the cause was of his car accident. Like it was a clear day, no traffic. There's not any clear reason, you know, why he went off the road. Um, so this whole like not knowing is really what's what's tearing them apart. You know, when their minds kind of roll over and over asking, you know, why this happened and whether or not he will ever wake. And while they're thinking through this, we as the audience kind of get uh, sort of a hint at, the, you know, suspecting that these two characters might know uh, what the cause for his accident could have been, but they don't really want to face it yet. 
We then move on to day five, voices. And so back in the limbo realm with our character, me, um, he starts experiencing all these like disembodied voices that begin speaking to him from all around and, you know, telling telling me what, what he has been through. They begin kind of recounting his, his past experiences. And so Pride doesn't want to trust these voices, but Love and Reason want him to follow the voices and see what they might uncover. While at the same time, the character of Fear warns that if they blaze ahead, that path could lead to death. So Me decides that he wants to push forward and go through this journey with the help of love and reason um, as he thinks that the only way out of this realm is to confront these voices and move forward with the journey. Day 6, Childhood. Me is then taken back to his childhood and uh, in this scene we open with him, you know, kind of hiding away from his father. So fear and agony kind of make uh, me relive this this childhood of experience of uh, how his father would beat him and berate him and tell him how worthless he is and how that contributed to who, who he is now as an adult. And so, um, you know, one day as a child, uh, his father just never ended up coming home. Um, but even though his father was now gone, um, as a child, me then continued to carry on the abuse and self-hatred of himself, even within his father's absence, since that was kind of all he knew, you know, and he had really truly come to believe that he was worthless and didn't deserve anything more than what he got. So um, now, once reliving this, our current version of our me character breaks down as he has to kind of relive these memories and revisit all these painful things in his past. Day seven, hope. So we are now back in the hospital um, and the best friend is just sort of reminiscing, um, talking to me's unconscious body as he just recounts how they used to get into all kinds of trouble when they were kids and, you know, when they were younger and how much fun that they would have together and how much hope they had for what life would bring them when they were younger. And he just kind of begs me to come back to himself and to wake up. So me in his limbo realm hears his best friend speaking to him um, and his best friend's words just kind of help give him the hope and the strength to carry on in this journey. Day eight, school. So fear then introduces me to a memory from his school days. And so me had, you know, no friends and was constantly getting beat up at school when he was a kid. And so pride tries to convince him to, you know, get back at the bullies and make them pay. Well, reason says, you know, repaying the violence with more violence won't solve any of his problems. So Mean knows that he can't actually beat up these bullies. You know, they're way too big and there are too many of them. But he does see another kid in the hall. He looks weak and alone and he sort of resembles me himself. And so Mean sees this kid would be a pretty easy target. And, you know, if he were to go beat him up, then maybe he could prove that he's, you know, he's not weak and he is not one to be walked all over and he can stop getting beat up. And so he uh, ends up beating up this, this poor helpless kid. So this kind of starts a cycle of abusive and violent behavior that has just kind of perpetuated throughout me's life. Day nine, playground. So this is just an instrumental track and I think it just kind of gives texture to the world and the kind of childhood memories that me is living through. We then get to day 10, memories. So we're halfway through the journey. Um, when we are back at the hospital, the wife and the best friend are, you know, obviously really devastated and they're starting to grow kind of desperate. You know, they thought that uh, me would wake up by now, but the doctors don't really know what's wrong with him. And they don't know why he hasn't woken up yet. And so they decide to kind of just take turns talking to me and recounting better times to try and get him to wake up. So me is able to hear everything that they say and love and passion encourage him to, you know, embrace these memories and, you know, use them to help guide him to where he needs to be at the end of his journey. Day 11, love. So Mia is then taken back to the day he first met his wife. Um, that he was out at a bar and he saw her across the room and it was pretty much just love at first sight. And so, you know, Mia is really nervous, but he finally gathers the courage to go up and talk to her. But, you know, as he crosses the room, um, Agony starts to speak to his insecurities, telling me that, you know, he will end up just like his father. And then Fear joins in to tell him that, you know, she'll turn him down and, you know, no one could ever possibly love me. But then he hears his wife's voice telling the rest of the story and how they did walk up to each other and they didn't even say a word, but they danced all night and that was how they first met. Uh, we then get to day 12, trauma. So, Mi is then forced to relive the guilt that he feels about his mother. So, um, his mother needed him when he was a child, but he was going through so much, you know, trying to deal with his father's abuse, he couldn't be there for his mother. And I, like, 
I like to think maybe she was really ill or going through some kind of, um, you know, health problems. Um, but of course, me was just a child when his father left and he, he, you know, he's a kid. He can't really do much. Um, but he's always felt pretty guilty about it because soon after his father left, his mother died and he's always felt really guilty about not being able to be there for her. Um, even though he was, you know, just a child at the time. So he is forced to confront these feelings of guilt um, and we then move on to day 13 signs. So Mi's eyes have kind of been opened, you know, metaphorically in this in this um, limbo realm to all his flaws and shortcomings. And he begins to really wish that he could be a better man to deserve the love that his wife gives him. So, um, of course, you know, his wife loves him very much. But he also has these feelings of inadequacy and, you know, worthlessness that he thinks maybe he doesn't deserve her love. And so he, uh, he hears her speaking to him and begging him for a sign that he's still in there, that he, you know, he could still wake up. Um, and in the hospital, a tear runs down his cheek and his hand clenches into a fist. And so the wife and the best friend are glad to see that, you know, there's signs that he's still in there. However, we are seeing a little bit of foreshadowing of their fear. Um, and we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Day 14, pride. So, me battles with pride who tells him that he must, you know, be a man and prove his father wrong and become wealthy and powerful, um, even if it means, you know, stepping on others to get to the top. And so, because of this, you know, insecurity of, you know, needing to feel like he he's worthy, me has this, like, incessant need to, you know, like, be the man, be on top, get some kind of power position within his job. And he sees that this is a very detrimental thing to him. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't want this to be his nature. He never even wanted to be a businessman originally, but he, you know, he let his father's words haunt him into, into trying to find some kind of power position. So at this realization, uh, reason implores him to try and, you know, return to his earthly body. And, you know, a pride agrees that he should also try to return to his earthly body, but more, pride agrees more out of like selfish reasons. Um, and, but, uh, you know, we haven't finished the journey yet. You know, he hasn't confronted all his demons and all his um, character flaws just yet. So he can't quite return to his body yet. So that takes us to day 15, betrayal. So this track shows how me betrayed his best friend. And so they both, so they both worked together at a firm and they were both, you know, up for promotion for director. Um, but me knew his friend had once tampered with the books. And so what me did is he dug up the evidence and left it out so everyone could see, um, thus making sure that me was the one who got the promotion instead of his friend. And his friend ended up getting fired and me never told him that he was the one who did it. And so me realizes that he needs to come clean about what he did and tell his best friend that it was his fault that he got fired. Day 16, Loser. This is, this is a fun track um, because it's such a, like, a dark, a dark track, but it has these overlays of, like, really happy, you know, like, folk music. <laughs> and I like, I kind of love that juxtaposition. So, I really, I really like this track. Uh, but here we have Mi's father appearing in this limbo world. And so, it's, it's, like, this manifestation of everything that um, he fears and hates um, is this man who is his father. And so, and so his father appears out of nowhere uh, pretty much just to confront me. And he begins berating me, calling him worthless, freak, loser, weakling. Um, and, you know, he just shows up to say all these nasty things and then he leaves and disappears. But the father reveals a lot about himself when he, he's going through this tirade. And we get to see how, you know, who the real loser is in this situation, which is, of course, the father and not me himself. We then get to day 17, accident. Here we finally get to see what happened in this accident and how me ended up in the hospital. And so, um, me was driving home one day. He was really distraught on the and on the verge of a breakdown. This is because um, me saw his wife smiling and hugging another man. Um, now, it doesn't say who this man was, and it's possible that me doesn't even know who it was. He might have saw, seen it from a distance, but it was still enough to make him go crazy with jealousy. Um, and so, you know, all these unresolved issues from his past, catch up to him, and, you know, he's just really upset about, you know, he feels betrayed and, like, his wife doesn't love him anymore, and so he's driving and he just can't deal with all of these emotions all at once, and so he ends up yanking on the wheel as he's driving just to make it all stop. 
day 18 realization. So me realizes that, you know, after seeing what happened in the accident, he realizes that he tried to kill himself. And he realizes that, you know, he needs to face all of his demons and he must come clean about his past and reveal who he really is in order to fight to be a better person despite what fear and agony are trying to do to, you know, bring him down. He realizes that he needs to face all of his demons in order to, you know, move forward with the journey and return to his earthly body. So he, he decides he must come clean about his past and reveal who he really is and fight to be a better person despite how fear and agony are trying to drag him down. And so he decides he must fight to return home and he becomes dedicated to doing just that. Day 19 disclosure. And so, so we are back in the hospital once again. The wife and the best friend finally confess to me the secret that they've been holding back this whole time. And so the two confess that they actually had an affair with each other. Basically, the, their explanation is that the friend was out of work and depressed and, you know, the wife felt abandoned and unloved by her husband who couldn't deal with his inner demons and always put his work before her, their marriage. And so the wife and the best friend, you know, they, they never really loved each other. They just ended up in each other's arms for comfort while they were both going through pretty rough times. And the wife promises that she still loves me with all of her heart and, you know, he, he's the only one for her. And so, uh, here me also decides at the end of this track that he will wake up from this dream world and return to his body. We then get to the 20th and final day, confrontation. So, me, who is still in this limbo world, maybe half in, half out in some weird way, he somehow confronts his best friend and confesses you know, that he was the one who got him fired and confesses to, you know, what he did. And the friend says that, well, you know, he's kind of always suspected that it was him. Um, and, you know, me asks if he'll ever forgive him. And the friend says yes. And, you know, in a way, they're both kind of even now. Um, me then goes to his wife and professes, you know, he will be a better man. He's going to turn his life around. He's had the chance to deal with all his inner demons and all his, you know, past uh, trauma. And, you know, he wants to be the kind of man that deserves her. And so, um, me ends up, so me is able to defeat fear and agony who tell him, you know, he can't do it. And he kind of embraces his new self, his new life, and he begins to wake up. And then, song is cut short and we hear this robotic voice, of course, say, the human equation program aborted, have a nice day, dream sequencer offline. So, this has all been a part of the dream sequencer, which of course you might remember from the Universal Migrator and the past two albums. Of course, this all ends um, with Forever the Stars just waking up in the dream sequencer. And so this means, of course, that none of it was real. It was all just a simulation. It was all just a part of the dream sequencer. Um, and it was likely just a way for the character of Forever of the Stars to try and experience human emotions. Um, which, if you're confused about who this Forever character is, you might need to go back to the Electric Castle album. Uh, basically, he is from a race of beings, eons into the future, whose, you know, all emotions have been bred out of them, and he wants to feel human emotions and experience them. So, uh, that was all just an experiment <laughs> for him to get to feel human emotions, and, um, yeah, just like a science experiment. So, but yeah, I thought this was a brilliantly done album, uh, storyline-wise, because, you know, of course, you, you don't think that it's gonna end up having any kind of tie-ins with the rest of the universe. It doesn't seem like a, you know, crazy science fiction space opera, but at the end, of course, it is. So, um, yeah, this, this album doesn't disappoint, and I'm curious to hear all of your guys' interpretations and thoughts on this story. Drop all of that down in the comments. I am looking forward to covering more of the Aryan universe here in the near future, so if you are really excited about more Aryan stuff, please drop that in the comments as well so that I know to do those videos sooner rather than later. Also, let me know your favorite track on this album and your favorite um, guest vocalist on this album. There are some incredible ones. I'm a big fan of uh, Opeth, so I'm a big fan of Mike Lackerfeld. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was awesome to have this him on this track, and I, you know, absolutely love his vocals, and I feel like it adds so much more depth to the character, and he's a perfect one to play the fear character as his... I could... I'm, I'm getting off track here. Anyway, <laughs> I could go on and on. Um, Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, feel free to subscribe and join my Metalhead community. Link is down in the description. I'm also doing some like giveaways on my email list from my Metalhead community the next couple months. So if you want to win free shit, then join my Metalhead community. It's totally free. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Oh my god, I think I did that whole take without drinking anything.